G'day guys, it's Paul from Pauline Man Astro and welcome to today's video where we're going to take a deep dive into using generalized hyperbolic stretch. If you haven't seen the first video, there's a link up here uh, where I importantly show you how to install the script and how I initially was playing around with, with the tool. Since then, I've had quite detailed conversations with uh, David Payne, the guy that wrote the original pixel math expressions, and he took a heap of his time to write me some really detailed responses on how he uses it and... Uh, and why he uses it that way. And he was happy for me to, to talk about it here today, which is fantastic. That's why I love this community. I should point out that I'm not an expert with this tool. Uh, even David himself was quick to point out he's not an expert with this tool. It's new, new to him as well. Um, he uses these functions every day in his day-to-day -day job, but in terms of image processing, it's new to both of us. So uh, we're still learning as well. But the, the wonderful thing about this tool being so mathematical and so numeric based is that you can really hone in on what works for you and why. So in today's video, I'm just going to concentrate on how I find my initial um, settings that work for my initial stretch. Um, and hopefully we'll get some nice visual information on why I think those settings work for me. There seems to be basically two camps here. Um, and, and this is what David's feelings are that he's imparted to me. I'm a wild field imager, as you can see, and we'll talk about this image in a minute. But most of my images tend to have nebulosity throughout the frame. So there's certain settings that seem to be working for me. David seems to do a lot of longer focal length imaging, where the, there's a galaxy or planetary nebula kind of in the middle of the frame and then mostly deep sky. Uh, so he's found settings are a bit different for those kind of images. But hopefully if you follow through the kind of steps I'm doing here, a couple of times you'll you'll be able to get a, an intuitive sense of where to look for the settings that, that will work for your images. So this image here that I'm going to be working on is uh, one of mine on Gabriella Mistril, which is kind of a uh, an edge of the, the Great Nebula in Carina, a Southern Hemisphere object. And all I've done so far is done a small crop just to get rid of any stacking artifacts that might be there around the outside. I've done a double DBE. Um, by that I mean I've done a division and then a subtraction. I found if I have some data that I've gathered across, say, the moon cycle, uh, division can often help for me, and then subtraction can just give a little bit more. I know Sean Nielsen on Visible Dark sometimes uses the same kind of technique. Then I just did a stock standard SHO combination, no mixing of the channels or anything like that, just a straight SHO. But what I did do uh, was go to Script, Utilities, Auto Color. And all auto color does, if you don't have the script, all auto color does is a uh, background neutralization and linear fits the, the channels so that they're, they're more balanced. That's all I have done at that point. So now let's jump in and I'll show you how I zero in on the settings that work for me for generalized hyperbolic stretch. So I go to script, utilities, GHS. And I'm gonna choose this image, image 46. Under my target view, it asks you to remove the screen transfer function, that's fine. So what we need to do is we need to determine what these first three parameters are basically for our initial stretching. That's the important bits. And what we need to do first really is try and zero in on this symmetry point. That's the point where the maximum stretch is going to occur. At the moment it's defaulting to zero right at the left hand edge. The stretch intensity factor here is going to determine how extreme it is around that symmetry point. Most of this, the bigger you make that value, most of the stretching will happen around that symmetry point and then very little around the extreme points, which is what we want in the initial stretch. Uh, we don't want to blow out the stars. So a value somewhere between eight and 10 is fantastic for this B value. And then we can worry about the what the stretch factor is last once we've, we've worked out the other two. So to find the SP point, I zoom in on my histogram. This isn't stretching it, it's just literally just taking a magnifying glass and zooming in on that left hand edge of the, the histogram. But my focal length, what I find is when, when the nebulosity is taking up most of the frame, my SP value is going to be somewhere on this left hand portion of the histogram. If I push it to the right hand side, I well, you'll see what happens when we go through it. Uh, what David has, has gone through with me when I've been talking to him online is he's suggesting if you've got something isolated like a galaxy or planetary nebula in the middle of the frame and most of it's just dark background sky 
that's where maybe a, an SP value on this end is going to be beneficial. But for me on my wide field where there's mostly nebulosity, I find if I push it too far, that there's some issues that'll crop up. So what I like to do is I, I like to create a series of images so that I can compare them. I could do this just by changing the symmetry point here and, and looking at the preview, but I found it's much easier to create a series of them and look at them and I can keep comparing them backwards and forwards without having to remember what did the previous image look like. But if, if you want to do it that way, you definitely can. It's going to save you um, a whole heap of images on the screen here. So that's up to you. If you're going to do it my way here, then we need to create a new image here. Uh, otherwise, we're going to override our image that we're working on. and We don't want to do that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I click on, on the histogram here anywhere, it's going to create a blue line and tell me what the value, the X value is for that histogram. So I'm going to start at the left hand edge here and I can see it's 0 0.00154. So I'm going to start with 0015, okay, and then I'm going to push it, like I said, to just past that histogram so that you can see uh, what happens if, if we push it too far. And you can see that would be about 0019 at that point. Okay, so I know I'm going to vary my, my SP value from 0.0015 through to 0.0019. I might go up by 0.1s. Uh, if I was doing this to more accurately find an SP value uh, myself and not just for the video, uh, I might make that that adjustment finer, but we don't want to make this video an hour long. So let's just change 0.0015 there, make my stretch intensity eight, and then I'm going to get rid of my zoom. I don't need it anymore. So I can just drag that down to zero or one. And now I'm going to move my stretch factor until that image gets to the 25% mark. Okay, now this stretch isn't necessarily what you're going to do to your actual image. All I'm doing here is I want to create a, an apples for apples um, kind of comparison to find the SP value I want. And then we can do a, a better stretch once we've found that value. So I'm going to go to 25% here just to get a really strong stretch, make it very obvious what we're looking at. Um, and I'll, I'll go through that. So here, here is what that stretch looks like. Okay. I'm then going to make sure I re-choose the image I want to work on because it automatically defaults to the image it just created and I don't want to stretch that. I've already stretched it. I'm going to go back to image 46 and now I'm going to change this to 0.16 this time because we want to go up by 0.1. And again, make this image. So like I said, I'm going to end up with a, a series of images. So go back to image 46, change this to 0.17. And what I'll see happening every, this, this histogram is going to start moving to the left. So I want to drag it back again. I want an apples to apples. So I'm going to move it to about the 25% mark again. Just so they're about the same medium brightness as I work through them. Change this to 0.18. Drag that. So it's about around on average there, the, the middle of the... The hump there would be at about 25%. Create my new image. And then we'll do 0.19. And you can see the images are getting quite a bit brighter now. Okay, make sure I choose my image 46. Drag this stretch. And, and this is, remember, this is now past the peaks of the histogram for the symmetry point. And what you can see is that the, the, the histogram doesn't want to move to that 25%. What happens is it breaks into two pieces. And this is what happens when, when your symmetry point gets too extreme, your stretch gets too extreme, um, the histogram breaks into pieces. This is the lower portion of the histogram where the fainter nebulosity and background is, and this is the, the brighter stuff, the bright stars and the brighter nebulosity. It breaks it into pieces. It's gone insane, right? You don't want to use that. So at this point, we're done with our initial um, work here. So I'm going to close GHS down. We obviously don't want that one. That's where we've gone too extreme. So I've got a series of images here. Now, if I'm working at finer scales, what I might do is create an Excel spreadsheet uh, and, and just have which image matches up with which SP value so that I can better make my decisions. So we know this one's the 0 0.0018. So I might look at the extremes first. So here is 0 0.0018 and 0 0.0015. So I can see this one's quite a bit brighter. 
What we might do before we go any further though is, remember I said I want apples to apples. I probably should have done this before I closed GHS, but that's all right. Let's reopen it quickly. Utilities, GHS. And this time I'm actually gonna be working on these images. So I want GHS image one. And I did go through this in the previous video as well. I can change this stretch type to linear pre-stretch. So what I'm doing here, I'm gonna clip them all to the same. Again, this is not something you probably wanna to do to your actual image. This is just to try and get an apples to apples here so we can better compare them. So this is gonna clip the black point 0 0.05 on this image. Uh, I don't wanna create new image this time. I, I wanna actually do it to this image. So I'm gonna click on that. Then I'll do number two and we'll do this quite quickly. I just want to make sure they're all 0 0.05. So they've all got the same clipping because then they should all have roughly the same median value for brightness and they'll be all clipped to the background the same as well. So it'll make direct apples for apples comparisons a bit easier to do. So now I can close that up. Like I said, I probably should have done that before I closed GHS. So here we go. We've got our two images here and you can see they've got about the same background clipping, but this one's quite a bit brighter than this one. But the stars are also quite a bit bigger in this one compared to this one. So once we get to the, the kind of middle of the histogram, the image gets much brighter, but it's at the potential expense of these stars here. There is more fainter background nebulosity uh, that I can see here, and these darker dust bands are more obvious, but it's at the expense of larger, brighter stars. Hopefully that's coming across on YouTube. Uh, the other thing I can do is zoom in to a region, say over here, where there's some nice subtle graduations in, in brightness between dark dust and this brighter portion of nebulosity and some more subtle changes in brightness here. And if I compare the two, you can see that this one has kind of lost some of the subtlety that's in this one. It's, it's all been brightened to the point where I've kind of lost that, that subtle changes here. So for me, getting to the peak of the histogram is too far for my SP value. Sure, it brightens the nebulosity nicely, but it's at the expense of my stars and um, this more subtle uh, graduations here. So that, that is too far, 0 0.0018 is too far for my image. Whereas if I look at, this is 0 0.0017, if I look at this one, I'll see that it's brighter, but I still have some of that subtlety. My stars are still quite controlled. They're not out of control. So for me, the 0 0.0017, right towards the, almost at the peak of the histogram, still seems to be quite nice. Now, I won't look at number two again to keep the video short but that one's going to look quite nice as well so we can close these these down now i don't need them that was just for me to zero in on my sp value so now we, now we've got it we can go to script utilities generalized hyperbolic stretch this time we'll do the strip the stretch properly we'll do an actual stretch so we won't do things quite as extreme but i now know a, a good sp value is somewhere around the 0016 or 17 i might even split the difference and do 16 okay a good stretch intensity is eight. And then I can just adjust this uh, stretch factor till I get a nice stretch. So let's, let's have a look somewhere like that maybe. We'll preview the stretch. That doesn't look too bad as a starting point. Okay, it's not as extreme as running straight to the 25%. That's probably gonna go too far. That's probably a good start for where I want to be. And I could probably zoom in a little bit and redo that process, um, find a nice SP value in here somewhere, or maybe around here somewhere, and go zero, what's that? Zero, one, one, eight, four, six. And let's get rid of that zoom. And then I could probably pull that stretch a little bit further. That's probably gonna be too far, maybe somewhere like that. I just wanted a little bit more, not too much more. Subtle, maybe we could push it a bit more. What about that? Yeah, that looks quite nice now actually. So it is brighter, but not over the top brighter. It's definitely pulled out some of that fainter nebulosity and made this, this 
section uh, a bit more apparent, hasn't blown out the start. All right, so there, there's how I zero in on my initial stretch parameters. Um, as I said, if, if you were going to do this for your images, take more time. Make those, those um, distances between your adjusted SP values smaller so that you can methodically wait, work your way along that histogram and try and find out where a great SP value for, is, uh, for you is. Uh, David has suggested once you've roughly got in at this point, um, maybe do it again, but even small SP values um, adjustments, um, maybe by the preview screen and not just creating hundreds of images to keep on, on top of there. Um, but he's, he's suggested that even slight changes in SP there can produce dramatic differences uh, in your initial stretching there. So it's it's an interesting it's an interesting approach. It's very numeric. It's very exacting compared to using, say, histogram stretching or uh, using curves. And it produces a, a really nice initial stretch. In the next video, I'll show you how we can move on from here and start really playing with those colors. Thanks for watching.